Did you know that the lack of exercise and sleep, poor diet, alcohol and tobacco are contributing factors to developing heart disease? Taking care of your heart is about making smart choices and it doesn't matter how young or old you are. Anyone at any age can benefit from simple steps to keep their heart healthy. February is Heart Month, so if you are due for that checkup, don't put it off. I'm Adrian Atkinson, and this is Jamaica Magazine. On our show today, we continue our conversation on caring for the heart, and government implements measures to protect citizens. We have these and much more, so stay with us. So, dear man, the strata thing you're telling me about, who manages all of that? The strata is managed by an executive committee elected at an annual general meeting. They ensure that the property is insured, keep accounting records, prepare the budget for the year, and submit annual returns to the commission. Annual returns? Yes, ma'am. Annual returns are audited financial statements or a copy of the accounts prepared in accordance with generally accepted accounting principles for the financial year and must be filed within 120 days after the end of the financial year. For more information on Strata Living, contact the Commission of Strata Corporations. Good day, I'm Theodore Henry, and this is your GIS News for Thursday, February 8. Jamaica and the United States have agreed to strengthen security cooperation to more effectively combat transnational organized crime. The governments made the commitment Wednesday during a three-hour visit to the island by United States Secretary of State Rex Tillerson. The sharing and exchange of intelligence is critical to the safety and security of our two countries and the wider region. Jamaica is our closest partner in this region. We appreciate the government of Jamaica has made important prog progress combating the lotto scams, cooperating closely with U.S. authorities to extradite suspected lotto scammers to the United States and establishing a bilateral lotto scam task force. Commitments have also been given to continue the support of the two countries' security forces, criminal justice systems, as well as anti-corruption and anti-gang programs. In the meantime, Prime Minister Andrew Holness says Jamaica is exploring new opportunities for energy diversification with the United States of America. With the new dynamics in the global trade in energy and with the United States now becoming uh, a net exporter of um, energy resources, uh, Jamaica can, in this new paradigm, benefit from that. Mr. Holness was responding to questions posed by journalists during yesterday's press conference involving U.S. Secretary of State Rex Tillerson. Concerns have been raised about regional energy security as the United States steps up its sanctions against Venezuela, a regional oil supplier. For his part, Mr. Tillerson said considerations would be given to the impact of U.S. actions on Caribbean countries that import Venezuelan oil. I don't want to get into specifics because we're going to, we're going to undertake a a very quick study to see are there some things that the U.S. could easily do with our rich energy endowment, uh, with the infrastructure that we already have available, what could we do to perhaps soften the impact of that. Jamaica was the last stop on the U.S. Secretary of State's week-long visit to Latin America and the Caribbean region. In other news, the Electoral Office of Jamaica, EOJ, says it's in full preparation mode for the by-elections in the St. Andrew Northwestern constituency and the Norman Guards Division. The by-elections are scheduled for March 5 and nomination day is set for next Monday, February 12. Nominations will be accepted between 10 a.m. and 2 p.m. at the Pembroke Hall Community Center in St. Andrew Northwestern and from 12 noon to 2 p.m. at the Winwood Road Primary and Junior High School for Norman Gardens. 112 polling stations will be used in Northwestern St. Andrew and 52 in Norman Gardens. 420 Election Day workers will be employed to conduct both elections and the EOJ says personnel are being trained to use the electronic voter identification system in both elections. 
The Electoral Office of Jamaica has submitted a $41 million budget to execute both by-elections. The St. Andrew Northwestern by-election is being held to select a replacement for Member of Parliament Derek Smith, who recently announced his retirement from active politics. Meanwhile, the Norman Gardens Parish Council seat became vacant last year when Angela Brown Burke resigned as councillor to run as Member of Parliament for St. Andrew Southwest. The Water Resources Authority, WRA, has officially launched the introduction of a volume-based fee, VBF, that will be charged to all persons or entities that have a license to abstract and use water in Jamaica. The move is largely in response to increased demand for water resources and the resulting need to protect against overpumping. WRA's Managing Director, Herbert Thomas, says the fee is intended to be both a regulatory and an economic instrument. On the one hand, it will be a catalyst for reducing water demands through increased efficiency and effectiveness in the usage of water allocated to the various obstructors. The VBF will also supplement the budgetary subventions needed to enhance our compliance monitoring and to provide financing support to the capital works of expanding the national hydromet network on rivers and wells. Minister Horace Chang, who launched the water abstraction fee on Wednesday, says the revenue will allow the WRA to continue critical research on managing our water resources. The implementation of the abstraction fee and the benefits to derive in securing our own water resource is in line with the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals and our own vision of 20, 2030 vision, which sees the access to clean potable water for all Jamaicans as a critical development objective. Fees are due on April 1 each year for the duration of the license, though licensees may make arrangements to pay quarterly or half yearly. The charges are calculated at less than a dollar per thousand gallons of water. The lowest rates are applied to non-consumptive users, while the highest rates are charged to industrial and agricultural uses. And finally, the Buff Bay and Iris Gelly Primary Schools have received grants valued at $10 million to bolster projects at the institutions. The funds were dispersed by the Embassy of Japan under its grant assistance for grassroots and human security projects. The Buff Bay Primary School received $67,515 for the purchase of a 2018 Toyota Coaster bus to transport students. Iris Gelly, meanwhile, received a check valued at $18,601 towards its rainwater harvesting and sanitation project. This is also timely as an overall investment in education, because we all agree that education will benefit not only individuals, but also the wider community. And that's it for GIS News Today. I'm Theodore Henry. Thank you for watching. Now make diseases spread. Wash your hands with soap and water instead. Wash them regular or use a hand sanitizer. Make sure the germs them dead. Touching your eyes or your mouth or your nose. Wash your hands before you do things like those. After you use the bathroom before preparing food, come on, wash your hands them clean. Vision 2030 goal is about creating a society that is secure, cohesive, and just. And the government, through its crime-fighting measures, is working towards achieving this goal. Despite success in the Get the Guns campaign, the deadly weapon continues to be featured in the country's murder rate. In 2017, more than 1,600 persons were killed from over 1,400 shooting incidents. And with the trend continuing in the first month of 2018, government has taken a firm approach to not only catch the perpetrators, but to curtail criminal activities for posterity. We have reached the point where we are now prepared to take those firm and resolute measures to ensure that the crime monster does not destabilize the promising future that is in store for Jamaica. Following this statement, Prime Minister Andrew Holness on January 18 announced a state of public emergency for St. James to deal with the spate of murders being committed in that parish. The order was gazetted by the Governor General. Beyond giving the security forces additional powers of search, detention and seizure, a great part of these regulations is aimed at protecting and preserving public safety. The regulations were tabled in Parliament on January 23 
paving the way for the establishment of an emergency powers review tribunal. This body will deal with any issues arising from the security forces operations under the state of public emergency in St. James. The three-member team will adjudicate appeals brought by or on behalf of persons detained under the powers granted to the security forces. Representation is also being provided through the Legal Aid Council. We must fulfill our duty to protecting human rights and maintain uh, a certain level of dignity, particularly for those that have been detained. Since then, a number of persons have been detained. Among them are men wanted for serious crimes and some who are strongly believed to be connected to gangs in St. James. Firearms and ammunition have also been seized during the operations. The security operations, which are in their very early stages, are going very well. We asked for and are getting unprecedented support from the public. We ask that members of the public continue to flood us with information. Tell us where the guns are. Tell us where the gunmen are. Tell us where the lot of scammers are. The National Security Minister says dragnet operations are being carried out across the island in support of the state of public emergency declared in St. James. These are geared at capturing wanted men fleeing that parish. Strategic operations have been launched in St. Anne, St. Mary, Westmoreland and St. Catherine. Divisions within Area 5 conducted a 24-hour blitz which saw increased visibility and intensified operational activities to include VCPs, raids, searches and visits to persons on curfew orders. 18 persons were detained in St. Catherine North and one in St. Catherine South as a result of these operations. Portmore St. Catherine has been identified as a likely area where displaced criminals may be housed. As such, a joint team from CTOC and the Fugitive Apprehension Team, Mobile Reserve, have conducted targeted raids on several premises. The decisive crime-fighting measure will also be strengthened with the fast tracking of key pieces of legislation. Debate on the major organized crime and anti-corruption agency MOCA bill began in the lower house on January 30. The security minister says a revised Firearm Act will be tabled in the next three months. The amended legislation will feature new penalties and harsher mandatory minimum sentences. This is the way to go considering that the gun features in over 80% of all crimes in Jamaica. There is also a commitment to the completion of amendments to the Fingerprint Act within eight months and for the Anti-Gang and Proceeds of Crime Acts in 10 months. Corrupt cops will not be spared as government intensifies its crime-fighting measures. Among the measures being organized is an early retirement scheme which will be implemented as an exit measure. The new policy is with the commissioner. He fully understands the issue of corruption and the overall effect, impact that it has on the reputation of the organization and has committed to begin the utilization of that important tool to hasten the transition of members of the force at all levels who are tainted by corruption or otherwise ineffective. The matter of corruption is also being tackled across all public bodies and the wider Jamaica. As the Prime Minister points out, this is a feeder for criminal activities. And so the state of emergency is not just targeted to the person pulling the trigger. It is targeted to every single player who forms a node in this network of criminal enterprise that is now a growing and thriving ecosystem. And we must destroy it. And so, the state of public emergency is targeted to? Reduced, contained the murder rate, disrupted and uprooted the criminal networks and have protected and secured the life and treasure of the people of St. James. While providing the space for other sustainable interventions. As we engage in activities to observe February as Heart Month, we highlight a few causes of heart failure.
According to medical experts, heart failure is a progressive condition in which the heart muscle has been damaged by disease or injury and cannot pump enough blood and oxygen to the body. The severity of heart failure determines the impact it has on a person's life. According to Dr. Knox Hagley, chairman of the Heart Foundation of Jamaica, the mild form of heart failure may have little effect on person's life, while severe heart failure can interfere with even simple activities and prove fatal. He said all forms of heart failure, even the mildest, pose a serious health problem, which must be treated promptly. To understand what is meant by heart failure, you need to take into consideration that the heart is a pump. And any good pump, any efficient pump, whatever goes into that pump, the pump pumps it out. And if the pump is not doing that, it is failing. It's a similar thing with the heart failure. Blood goes into the right side of the heart from the body, and the right side of the heart pumps it into the lungs. And if the right side of the, fa the heart has failed to do this properly, it is called right-sided heart failure. The blood leaves the lungs and goes into the left side of the heart, and the left side of the heart then pumps the blood to the rest of the body. And if, in fact, the left side of the heart is not doing this efficiently, left-sided heart failure occurs. And quite often, both left and right sides of the heart have, got, have failed in such a case, and so we call that congestive heart failure. The term congestive heart failure is often used to describe all patients with heart failure. Dr. Hagley said, in reality, congestion, that is buildup of fluid, is just one of the features of the condition and does not occur in all patients. He said there are a number of diseases that affect the heart that could result in heart failure. These, he said, vary with age and family history. Some children are born with heart disease, and we call that congenital heart disease. One of the most common causes of congenital heart disease is German measles. And a number of the children who are born with conditions like hole in the heart, for instance, were due to the fact that the mother had German measles at the time that the organs in the fetus were developing. So the development of the heart was affected. Now we go on to the older children. And in the children, usually from 5 to 12, 15, but it may occur at an earlier age, is a condition called rheumatic heart disease. This is really a manifestation of rheumatic fever, which occurs predominantly in children with fever, and it presents with fever and pains in the joints, and in such a case, the heart may be affected. We see this among children, even new cases, and it is rheumatic heart disease, is in fact still one of the major causes of cardiac surgery that we see here. Dr. Hagley said in the older age group, heart failure does not happen in a vacuum. It is closely associated with major risk factors. We look at things like high blood pressure, which may begin to appear usually in the 30s, sometimes early on. But long-standing high blood pressure would lead to heart disease because high blood pressure, in addition to the fact that it gives the left side of the heart extra work to do, and so the heart muscle become enlarged, as you would expect. But in addition to that, the high blood pressure causes certain changes in the arteries which carry the blood to the tissues. And the result of those changes really is a narrowing of the channel to the artery, of the arteries, and that includes the arteries which are carrying blood to the heart muscle. The other major cause of heart disease in adults in today's world is a condition called coronary heart disease. That is the disease that leads to heart attacks, for instance. Everybody knows about heart attacks. Well, the, the changes which occur in this condition 
are the changes that are different from high blood pressure in that the changes occur on the lining of the arteries, as you see. Yeah? And eventually, those changes lead to narrowing of the vessels and then inadequate blood flow. If that vessel becomes blocked, a heart attack will occur. And of course, the heart part of the heart muscle, which was dependent on that blood flow, will be affected. Sometimes it may be a much more insidious process that the individual may not recall having a heart attack in a sense, but over the years, the channels become so narrow that the blood flow throughout is reduced, so the heart as a whole suffers from this, and they go into heart failure eventually. Patients can minimize the effect of heart failure by controlling the risk factors for heart disease. Obvious steps include quitting smoking, losing weight if necessary, abstaining from alcohol, making dietary changes by reducing the amount of salt and fat consumed, and exercising regularly is also helpful for many patients, but a doctor should carefully recommend the amount and intensity. Causes of heart diseases that could lead to heart failure are high cholesterol levels, high blood pressure, diabetes and abnormal blood sugar levels, obesity and smoking. Remember that it is never too late to reduce your risk of developing heart failure and other heart-related diseases. But the time to act is now. Jamaica has produced some of the greatest reggae classics that live on and continue to dominate the airwaves and stage shows. And every February we highlight the songs, the artists, the musicians and the producers and relive the era in which they were released. It is a time when we also recognize the contribution to the development of our music. The 2012 National Honors and Awards recognized seven members of the music industry. Toots Hibbert, Bunny Whaler, Peter Ashbourne, Lee Scratch Perry, Tony Gregory, and Clinton Jackson, with the very rare order of merit also given posthumously to the late Peter Tosh. Jamaican music reaches the soul of the people unites us, and makes us forget our differences and problems. Musicians past and present have made a lasting impression on this lucrative and entertaining industry, leaving those touched by their works with no choice but to pay tribute. Mr. Frederick Nathaniel Toots Hibbert. On October 15, 2012, the engaging performer approached the podium at King's House to accept his second national honor. The first, received years before, was the Order of Distinction Officer Rank. This time around, he was receiving the Order of Jamaica. A singer and songwriter, as well as a player of instruments, Frederick Toots Hibbert has made significant contribution to the development of reggae music in Jamaica. His contribution also spans festival song competitions, winning with songs such as Sweet and Dandy and Watabamba. In the 50th year of his music career and the 25th of his passing, Peter Tosh was honored with the Order of Merit posthumously, the third highest national award in Jamaica, long overdue, some might add. This was received by his daughter, Niambi McIntosh. Peter Tosh was honored for his influential contribution to the evolution of reggae music. Brother, 
Another revolutionary and holder of the Order of Distinction, Commander Rank, Bonnie musical career continues to shape the development of Jamaica's music, resulting in his second honor, the Order of Jamaica, on October 15, 2012. His son, Abby Jawela, received on his behalf. He's done a lot for Jamaica in general, but reggae music and music, um, he's seen it through a lot of stages and he's seen it go through a lot of genres to become what it is today. So I think he's, um, he, he, would, he would feel, I think he does feel like he deserves such an award. And, and I, like I said, he's honorable Never Livingston now, so he's very proud. The 2003 Grammy-winning producer Lee Scratch Perry was among the likes of Peter Ashbourne to join the commander rank in the Order of Distinction. A veteran musician and producer, Lee Scratch Perry played a major role in the development and acceptance of reggae and dub music in Jamaica and overseas. Meanwhile, Peter Ashbourne, a very accomplished composer, pianist and performer, has been one of Jamaica's major composer arrangers of commercial music for more than three decades. Noted as one of Jamaica's most important and distinctive reggae bass players and pioneers, Clifton Jackie Jackson is also one of the founding fathers of Jamaican popular music. His role in the growth and development of our music during the ska era of the mid-1960s helped to usher in another of Jamaica's musical styles, rock steady. Released in 1982, Gypsy Girl remains a favorite among music lovers and to date is one of Tony Gregory's signature songs. In the music industry for decades, this reggae, soul and R&B recording artist has worked alongside Byron Lee and the Dragoneers as lead vocalist in the 60s. The the soother of our souls, and the shrink of our lives. Not to mention the fun and excitement as it draws people together to unwind and have a good time. Indeed, musicians are heroes of a different kind. Oh God, I really wish I could retire right now. High time I start my own business. Well, honey, don't you think you should apply to the early retirement program? Look how long we are talking about that. You know you're right. The SERP is for eligible government employees between 50 and 59 years old. Speak with your HR department or see the press for details. Deadline is February 16. Apply now. We have come to the end of our show, but certainly not the end of our connection. Just click on our website, jis.gov.jm, and while you're online, send your feedback to Jamaica Magazine at jis.gov.jm or via tweet at JIS News. Do join us again tomorrow for another program. On behalf of the entire production crew, I'm Adrian Atkinson. Do take care. This has been a production of the Jamaica Information Service, the voice of Jamaica.